Hi there, it's Moira McDonald. Um, I'm going to do some stamp tags and I, uh, I'll i do them one at a time and cut in between so that I can uh, ensure I'm uh, get enough time to do this. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a focal image which is going to be this hot air balloon in the centre of my tag. I've just cut a piece of craft card I think it's seven centimetres wide and oh, to be fair I don't know what sorry about that what length it is wait a wee second it's just under 15 centimetres long right so the first thing I want to do is I want to stamp my whole air balloon in the centre of my tag there's a helicopter flying overhead, which means the police are out looking for someone. Not that I live in the crime capital of the world, of course. Right, so we put my hot air balloon in the centre of the tag. This time I haven't, you know how I used um, the mouse mat the other time? I don't need to use it with this because these are foam rubber stamps. So they have... Uh, as well as the actual impression of the, the stamp itself. They're cushioned by this foam rubber here. Can you see that? The, the grey area. So that takes the place of the, uh, what do you call it? The, the mouse mat. Right. Not the best of impressions, but you tend to find that when you've got big areas that are solid that you, you can be very hit and miss but it's not detracting massively from the stamp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask that area. You'll remember when I did the stamping with the uh, ticket stamps I used the tape to cover up the stamp so that I could print it and make it look as if something else was behind it. This time I'm actually going to use a masked image so I've stamped it out onto what is stamping mask paper by Inka Dinkadoo. Um, widely available. I think I got mine on Amazon because in Britain it wasn't so widely available but it will be in America because Inka Dinkadoo is an American company. And effectively what it is is it comes with a backing. Now you'll need to bear with me while I try to separate them. Uh, because what I've stamped onto will be adhesive, kind of like a, a bit of tape. Maybe should have done this before I started filming. There we go. So peel off the blue bit and put my balloon pretty much on top of my balloon here. So effectively it's covered up. So what I'm going to do now, bear with me, as I should have got this out. Hold on a wee minute, I'll just where I've got you. Right. Sorry for all the movement there. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little stamping platform. Uh, I've got two of these. When I first when I first bought one, I bought this six inch version because that was the first one that came out here. And uh, I figured, given what the price of uh, the Misty stamping tool was. I probably wasn't going to be able to afford it if they brought out anything better. So I got the the little one and I used that for cards and things. Right, so wait a minute, I'm going to put it in the mid... No, wait a minute, I'm going to put it down in the... No, I'm not. I'm going to put it there. Right, now ordinarily you would stick it down with your magnets and it may well be the case that when I use my next stamp 
what I'm going to stamp on top of this that I'll need to trim this anyway because this is going to be quite difficult to to get it on completely so what I've got is um, it's a Stampin' Up stamp are you seeing this Lisa? I'm using my Stampin' Up stamp um, it's my Stampin' Up stamp it's a big background and the only reason I'm using a big background is it will save a lot of time when it comes to showing you what I'm doing here you could just go over it with lots of little stamps and we will inevitably stamp something else uh, where I will just do lots of little stamps now make sure that's stuck to that because I don't want that moving I want this to be fairly flat so that when I run over it with ink it isn't an issue now I stamped my balloon in black but I'm going to use a dark brown for this just so that there's more you know it's it's even more obvious that it's a different layer big stamp, lots to cover and hopefully we'll get a decent impression the first time that we stamp it and then we just close it over and stamp as if we're trying to re resuscitate somebody basically CPR stamping Tim Holtz refers to it as that um, you're just basically making sure that there's good contact everywhere especially since it is such a big background stamp to make sure that looks pretty good to me I would say yep remove my little magnets peel off that and you'll notice that the stamping is in the background relative to that all I need to do now is trim off my corners up the top and punch my hole and I've got a stamp uh, a tag organised and that's it so I th this can be used again if you were making multiple versions of that stamp or not so much multiple versions but perhaps using it and changing the background in some fashion you could retain that just put this back on it and put it away in a cupboard somewhere or in a wee folder where you keep your, your stamping stuff and that's it I may well just keep it in the little wallet that I've got that stamp in and that'll be it what I also did with my stamping tool I know Misty come with you can buy pages um, I got just squared paper laminated it and I use it this will wipe off and that's that's there as a grid if I ever I need to measure anything up and that's that so that's that tag made just about apart from cutting off the corners um, I'll get the try and find my trusty tag that I use for cutting my corners And that's my tag, all I need to do is punch my hole now and I'm organised, that's the first one done so uh, I'll cut here if you pardon that pun and I shall organise the next uh, stamping uh, whatever it is, I'm, I'll look out whatever I'm going to use next and give you advice on how I would do that ok, so be back with you in a second Hi there I'm going to McDonald again and I'm going to just do some 
stamping to make it look on this occasion like it's almost cut from scrapbooking paper. Again I've used the next bit of my craft card. I'm using photopolymer stamps this time so that's the, the clear stamps and because it's photopolymer I need to put this layer of foam below it. This actually comes with a stamping tool. You'll always get a, a foam layer with stamping tools unless you buy the Tim Holtz one in which case you open up the thing and turn it round so that it stamps in another way because it gives you a different... It, it presumably is cushioned in a different way. So I've taken my stamps and I've just laid them r not so much randomly but I've put them in such a way that they're going to overlap the paper so that it doesn't look just, you know, you, you'll, you'll think from looking at it that what's happened is it's been cut from a bigger piece of scrapbooking paper and I can do some distressing over the rest of it once it's finished. So I've laid them all out on that, stick them to my board by closing it over. I've got my little magnets holding my paper in place. Uh, different colour of ink this time, it's a darker brown. Um, I do a lot of stamping and I have done a lot of stamping for a few years now uh, because obviously I'm a, I was primarily a card maker. Um, so you do a lot of stamping on cards generally speaking. And close that over and then it's CPR within reason. You don't want to press too fast, uh, too hard because if you press too hard you can just squash the stamp and if you do that you're going to obviously lose the the impression of what you're doing. You know it's just going to make it all blurry. So there's no point in what you want to do is you want to aim for a reasonable pressure but not a ridiculous amount to the point where you're squashing the pattern out. I think that's fine. I think that's a reasonable enough impression. So that's that done. It's just a question of cleaning up those stamps now and obviously as always cutting off the corners of my tag and I'll punch my hole with my crocodile or my other little tool once I'm finished with everything else. And that's that one done. So, cut and I shall go clean my stamps and come back and we'll tackle the next one. Okay? So, third stamp. Um, what I'm going to do this time is just do a tag that is patterned and I'm going to use um, a different coloured ink. I'm going to use uh, Distress Oxide, Tim Holtz, everybody loves Tim, um, Stormy Sky, it's a kind of grey blue shade. And what I'm going to do is I've positioned, again, photopolymer stamp, uh, so I've put it on my cushioned background and put it on top of my tag. This is the third of my tags because I only cut three so that will do is for today. And position that using my Distress Oxide. Make sure I've stamped my image as best as possible. And then press it down. Cover over my ink while I'm working because you know I can be a wee bit clumsy. This is really as well, I think. Right, let's see what kind of image we've got. It's not too bad at all. Distress Oxide gives a really quite bizarre colouring on craft card. 
Now, I'm going to be positioning this differently, so I need to clean it off. In fact, if you bear with me, I'll go and get a tissue and dry it. The reason I'm drying it is, uh, like all distress products, it reacts with water or fluid of some description. So if it's the case that the wet wipe that I used to um, clean it is still has a residue on it when I go to reposition it, it will impact the colour that comes up. So, just checking it over and to my eye it looks, it looks okay. Right, so what I want to do is I want to position it in such a way that I get pattern continuing somewhat as if it is just one big pattern on the tag. I'm pretty sure I've got another blue shade of Distress Oxide. Give me just a wee second. Yeah, I've got Broken China Distress Oxide. So we'll use that and see... See what kind of shade that gives us in the tag. Get that to stick. I've managed to get brown ink on my fingernails. I'm not here to sell you Tim Holtz products by the way, I think there's Tim Holtz is pretty good at that. So are a number of other people who clearly are employed to do so. Right, so we'll use that on this. And see how that looks. Whoa, pretty vibrant. Can you notice the difference there? Hold that up for you. Stormy skies at the top there, and that's the uh, broken china. It's really quite different. Quite impressive. Right, so that's that. Now the thing about the distress oxide products is you can layer them, and in theory, they shouldn't uh, shouldn't alter their colour. Do you know what I mean? It should uh, it should be the case that you can just put another colour on top and it will blend in. Just try and dry that off. I'm not actually going to use that stamp again. Uh, let me see where's the box I got it out of. Here we go. Got a box of stamps that are just basically patterns. Uh, so, if we introduce another one, might be a bit much actually to be fair, but what I might do is, I've got a wee kind of corner stamp here, I'm going to move that, now I will be probably, I'll cut off a corner of one of these, uh, it just it's up for grabs which ends the top, if you know what I mean, because obviously when it comes to this um, it is just a pattern, it's a random pattern so it doesn't need to it doesn't need to match anywhere. I can wipe that because in, again in theory that shouldn't touch my card. That's quite, quite pretty up there. Wipe that off and make sure I dry it because I'm going to use it for the other side. Now it is possible 
to do this without a stamping tool you can just do it with ordinary uh, you know like an acrylic block but I'm a real show off because I've got the stamping tool so I'm using it like to try and keep my, my stamps as tidy as possible. I can wipe this off because Distress Ink is all washable. I need to leave that to dry obviously before I put it away so move it out of the way. And I'll take my trusty tag that I use for my corners. And that's us. Uh, I'll probably go round the edges with some brown distress ink. Move that out the way. Move that out the way. Get that ready. What I would advise is if you're using Distress Oxide in particular, it does take quite a long time to dry um, and in that respect I wouldn't dive in with trying to do the Distress and Roundabout it until it does dry because all that will happen is you'll smudge your blues somewhere over that. So I'm going to leave that as it is just now to dry and I'll tackle my other two tags because I didn't do them with Distress Ink. I did them with just normal run-of-the-mill ink. Ink ink. Um, I used archival links for these. Not that it really matters, but the particular ones I've used are not reactive with water. Uh, I used VersaFine Black on that. VersaFine is very good if you're going to do any water colouring and I used a VersaFine Clear to do the backgrounds so again VersaFine are absolutely fine for me then to come in. They dry relatively quickly and I can come in and tackle with my uh, Distress Ink tool. When you are distressing by the way, be fairly light handed you don't need to batter in um, to make it look as if you've dragged it through the mud. Unless that's the look you're going for. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, sometimes I, I, I do, you'll know yourself if you've looked at some of my other stuff, I do really quite like the, the grungy type of idea, but um, there's a fine line between making a mess, as far as I'm concerned, and grunge. So don't, you don't need to overdo how you, you do this. Now that's vintage photo I've used for that. What I'm also going to do is go around the very edges. Oops. Well, it wouldn't be me without hearing the word oops. Uh, I'm going around the edges with a wee ground espresso. Using the same tool. Because they're, they're mem- oops. Oops again. They're members of the brown shades, so I just like the dark to emphasise the very edge. I hope I'm in short okay here. That's fine. I ordinarily, I have to say, just use the the little ones, the little ink cubes, 
when, you know, I mean, he doesn't, he's not brought out those distress oxides in the little ones. So I have to use uh, the big ones for that. Because you know what it's like, Tim Holtz brings out something you've got to give it a go. Um, of Tim Holtz products I have tried that I would not recommend are Distress Crayons. I've still really got to figure out how to use those. I've not got very many of them, I bought a few and then I, I bought um, a black suit and a vintage photo from someone on, um, I think it was Amazon. And in their infinite wisdom, and send, instead of sending me one of each, they sent me six of each. Uh, and I contacted them and said, you know, this isn't what I wanted. I didn't pay for six, I paid for one each. Um, but I'd had free postage and I says, how do I get these back to you, given that I, you know, I, I had free postage when they, they came to me and I don't see why I should have to incur the cost when you made the mistake. Um, and they, they just, they said it's okay, you know, just, it was a mistake and forget about it. So I was left with uh, six at each and a half. Parted with a couple to friends. Um, but again, I must admit, I'm not entirely clear the best way of using them. I don't have any distress markers. Um, I use, if I'm doing any watercolouring, which I, I may well do some watercolouring in a tag, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I tend to use, oh gosh, what are they called for? Then I'll tell you. I use Zig Clean colour markers or Ink Tense pencils, which are absolutely brilliant. I love them. Absolutely love, 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 love. And I'm not very good at colouring within lines, but I try my best. Right, that's us. That's those two tags done. I can't finish off the other one because, like I say, I really would prefer to leave the Distress Ink to dry a bit longer. But that's some stamping done for our tags. So I shall leave you at this point and... Um, oh, look at all the dirt. Well, it's no dirt, it's ink. Uh, I'll leave you at this point and I'll see you again within the day or so and we'll tackle some more tags. Quite possibly uh, just kind of collage. Okay, so thanks very much for your time. Hope you enjoyed it. Any comments, feel free to have a wee chat with me and I'll see you again soon. And these will be for the book that I have been making, the Make It With Moira book. Okay, see you later guys. Bye.